I have no clue what's currently happening right now with Kanye. The only thing that I am more than certain of is that this is the D-Dot Podcast. I am D-Respect. I'm here. You're there. Your donations have been very appreciated, and you can always send them to my PayPal at d.podcast at gmail.com. I will be figuring out other other ways uh, to get you to donate, uh, you know, other services that maybe you're more comfortable with. But in the meantime, anything that you'd like to send, whether it be a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, hundred dollars. Come on, big spender. Haven't I proven myself to you yet? Have I not shown up yet for you? I need your validation. <laughs> No, I need your money. Seriously, uh, I have no clue what's happening right now with Kanye West. I have absolutely no clue. He continues to double down. It, it, It keeps on getting darker and it keeps on getting more real and more obvious. I didn't see the TMZ footage when I recorded the video that I did yesterday, but I will be discussing the TMZ freestyle. Um... I, when I first started YouTube, I the the obsession was the Illuminati. That was the obsession about rappers. I mean, I would say that this is probably the Alex Jones effect. Uh, this is the effect of uh, the the trickle the trickling down of all the conspiracy theories and the conspiracy theorists, which I always feel like conspiracy theory fans eventually just turn on their their creator because because they feel that eventually they have in some way proven themselves to be a shill uh proven themselves to have some sort of an interest or investing in something that's contrary to their initiative so the hunger to dig and to find bullshit is there on both sides so they just sort of end up eating each other but That sort of content was very, very popular when I first started because everything was about, well, if you've made it to this point, how could you have possibly gotten to that point without the the approval or the uh, the the the, you you've been given this privilege by your masters, you know, whether they be the elite families, whether they be the government, whether they be a subsidiary of some program that's funded by the government, but it's not really connected. It's like all of it, uh, like all of it is was was just about Jay Z and squares and triangles and symbols and Beyonce and the Eye of Horus and and reptile people and that's what it was all about. It was all about um, artists being sent out there to dumb down the masses, to basically eat our communities from the inside out. And rappers were just simply the ones that were sent to our communities because we care about them. And, um, you know, they have other means to get to other demographics of people and other and other races. Um, as I've gone along, I've I've really noticed that if that was ever true, that's the sexy form of what all this is. That's the sexy presentation of what all this possibly is. In order to make you a consumer, you have to be able to willingly accept mediocrity. Mediocrity is something that you have to kneel before and you have to understand it because once you understand what mediocrity is, you're okay with the consumption of mediocrity. You're you're okay with constantly consuming it because that's the system that it creates. Being mediocre means that it can it can be served to you on an assembly line quicker and you can consume it and move on to the next bit of mediocrity and eat it and eat it and eat it. So dumbing people down with music, dumbing people down with images is definitely something that's out there in the public consciousness. I just don't think it's a I just don't think it's an initiative that's that has that much evil behind it and has so much satanic imagery and human beings are just, we speak in metaphors with everything. We think in metaphors, we think in analogies. That's just the way our minds work. It's like the same thing people say with the Bible. Well, the Bible isn't a literal interpretation of what happened. It's just allegorical, you know, and I still feel that people do that today. That's what we do. We fucking storytell. We tell stories. Stories are what matters. It's what adds color to everything so we make everything so sexy 
And now when you see somebody like Kanye supporting Trump and, and, and doing all of that, and if this was 2011, I think the world would blow up. I think it would, it would just blow up. But we're so desensitized to... We're so desensitized to things that we disapprove of. We're so desensitized to things that that reaffirm our our thoughts that the world is indeed burning. You know that we definitely live in hell. <laughs> We're so used to digesting shit like that that when we see Kanye, it's just like, well, well, what else did you think was gonna happen? I mean, this is you know, th- so. I, I honestly feel like after seeing all the TMZ stuff and um, and the tweets and the fact that he supported him before, I still strongly feel the way I did in 2016 that it's an obsession over power. It's 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 an obsession uh, that overlooks that overlooks the the damage in which it does. It overlooks the the details of what Trump represents to people, because that's not very important to Kanye. Uh, When I said that in the video, I'm not saying that Kanye is a fan of his politics. That I don't even think Kanye is aware of where Trump stands politically. Barely anyone is, by the way. (laughs) So let's not pretend, let's not pretend like 80% of the people that are going at Kanye have no idea what Hillary Clinton, for example, would be doing in this exact same place, which, by the way, wouldn't be too different from Trump. Everybody always wants to say, well, oh, they, oh, they but there was this guy on the train the other day who, funny enough, he got on the train and he was uh, he was muttering the lyrics to, to Jay-Z's Renegade featuring Eminem. So, you know, that's that's a, that's a record that for me, it's always been like in the t- my top um, 50 favorite records of all time. And um so he's he's muttering the lyrics to the song and then he stops it and then then he goes off on this whole tirade like y'all people are y'all afraid of the truth and I'm gonna speak the truth y'all obsessed over and, and then he names like whatever recent um, pop culture phenomenon was happening at the time um, yeah y'all obsessed over blah 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 and Syria just got bombed <laughs> and then he walks off the train in, in such a pissed off way and. You know what that guy never realizes is those those are initiatives that always get carried out. They always get carried out no matter who is president. This isn't a conspiracy. This is actual fact. This is actual fact if you do your research. So 80% of the people that are going at Kanye don't even know what the politics are in the first place. They're just outraged to be outraged and all Kanye has to do is put on a hat and send out a few tweets. It's just it's just so media, you know, it's it's just so low level, um, low effort, low calorie uh, sensationalism that people are just accepting and people are just getting outraged about. And and everyone, um, you know, now you have Snoop Dogg, you have, uh, you know, you have 50. Well, 50 is always going to be involved in all this shit. I mean, 50, 50 is going to do what 50 is going to do. But you have people coming at Kanye and calling Kanye a coon and saying Kanye is in the sunken place now. And... I still feel the way that I feel. Uh, I still feel that all that's there. All that uh, uh, is a percentage of, of the equation. Just like I feel like attention is the percentage of the equation. Attention, attention, attention. Well, guess what? I'm trying to get your attention by doing the podcast. That's why I'm talking about Kanye West. Do you think Kanye West is at the the, the, the core of my soul to discuss? No, but it's something that I'm interested in, and I hope that you're interested in it as well, and we can have a discussion about it. You can hear what I have to say about it, because it's media. It's all based on attention. It's always a part of everything, and I think everybody looks at it in this black and white way, that if they think it's about attention, that they immediately dismiss it and say, well, that's attention. Let me turn my back to it and keep moving forward, but my argument is, yes, it's about attention, but you have to look at it as a matter of degree, you know, look at it in terms of a percentage. Don't look at it as just a definite black and white issue where if it's about attention, then that's it. Just dismiss it. His album's coming out and that's what he's doing. He's just looking for promotion. He's just looking for promotion. It's like, look, everything, and I mean everything, is trying to get your attention. Every banner on a website is trying to get your attention. Every ad that you see is trying to get your attention, but you buy into it anyway, okay? 
Every sneaker page that you follow on Instagram of somebody who independently sells sneakers, they're trying to get your attention. And in some way, shape or form, they're conditioning you to buy those products, right? It doesn't matter if it's a guy who's just, who's just, you know, just living in his home office and he's shipping these things out. He's getting your attention somehow and he's selling something to you, all right? And when you see the ad, you don't go, oh, well, he's just trying to get my attention, of course, he's trying to get your attention, but he's telling you a story at the same time. He's telling you a story through the sneakers. He's he's giving you some form of storytelling and you're believing in it somehow. So you end up believing in something either way. You know, as much as you want to curse attention and you want to say, oh, my God, everybody's doing this for attention. As much as you want to curse it, you buy into something. You spend your money somewhere. You believe in the purchase of a particular product, whether it's something that you eat, whether it's Uber, whether it's fucking Lyft. It doesn't matter. You still buy into something. So to fucking just reduce everything to just fucking attention all the time, it's it just dilutes things and it just takes away from what could really be going on, something more fascinating that's under the hood that people just always dismiss. You know, they just always dismiss it. And what I what I think in in uh you know as far as the Kanye thing, even though like I said, I, I really have have no clue what's going on. Um we may find out uh what's really going on based on what Kanye tells us once this interview with Charlemagne comes out that I, I can't wait to see. Um yes, uh yes, I, I can't wait to watch a media outlet. Uh, I know that's a terrible thing to say as a commentator, but yeah, um, uh, I can't wait to see what Kanye has to say. This is going to be a, a, a huge interview where he's just going to let everything out. I'm sure that he's going to say a lot of things to piss off a lot of people. He's going to take jabs at people who probably mentioned J. Cole. He's, and by the way, J. Cole, after, you know, after this album is out, J. Cole hasn't had any interviews whatsoever. He hasn't had any big interviews. I guess he doesn't feel like he has to do media. And I think that's a very big mistake on J. Cole's part. I think J. Cole should absolutely have a, a sit down with somebody. You know, it's, it's thought that in this day and age, you don't need anybody to sell something. And you don't need people to sell things. But if you're an artist and you think somehow that the conversation or... Uh, the story that goes along with your art doesn't matter, then you're totally wrong. You're totally wrong about that. Even Kendrick does does interviews. Yes, he does fluff interviews with 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 Beats One. He doesn't really go into the the lion's den as far as interviews, and he doesn't have to. You don't have to go that far. But at least give us the fluff interview. You know, give us that. Drake gives us that. Jay Z gives us that. They all give us that. And if you don't do that as J. Cole, it's it kind of feels it kind of feels the way I felt about about Colin Kaepernick after a while. After Colin Kaepernick did everything, uh, you know, with the kneeling and he didn't really do any interviews. And I feel that the impact of what Colin Kaepernick did sort of lost it's luster and it just got reduced to a meme and a hashtag because Colin didn't step up and have that interview where he goes into detail about what he what he feels. Um, I follow Colin Kaepernick on Instagram, so I do understand that he's out in the field and he's just doing he's not doing a lot of talking, but he's doing a lot of doing and that's perfectly fine and that's great. But it. It, he did himself a disservice by not having at least that one solid, that one solid interview, or it doesn't even have to be an interview. It could have just been Colin Kaepernick just, just having a, a 20 minute video where he just talks to the world and he tells him, look, this is what I think. Hey, have your notes ready, have everything ready, but have something of substance to say other than, you know, I just think a lot of things need to be addressed and you know, he's not a politician. He's just, you know, he's somebody who was just meant to point us in one direction. And if that's what his that's what he wanted to do, then then he accomplished that. You know, he didn't want to make himself a figurehead. He didn't want to make himself a talking head. And I can respect that. But Cole needs to Cole, Cole needs to. There's too much with that album. There's just too much going on with, uh, you know, speculating 
um, you know, speculating what the album means and, 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 and all this stuff. And, and I really think that he should do he should do an interview where he talks about these issues. You know, if he claims to be an artist that is is uh, is of substance and uh, I, I wouldn't say that that's something that he owes the public, but it's something that would really help. Uh, Cole is somebody who hasn't gotten the respect that he deserves. And I don't think that it's our fault. I think it's his fault because there's something that always seems to be missing. There's always something that seems to be missing when it comes to a Cole project. I can't put my finger on it, but it's just there's something there. You know, I think there was a... a I think there was a line in, in, in the Matrix. I think uh, Morpheus said something. You've always felt like there was a pin in the back of your head that you've never been able to get to or something like this. It's just always something with Cole that's there. And I think part of it is because he doesn't speak to us. And I think you need to speak to us once in a while. That was a huge detour because I still want to get to Kanye and I want to get to the to the Kanye freestyle. So I saw the Kanye TMZ freestyle. It's a situation when I'm involved. I like <laughs> I liked all that shit. That's a Kanye song to me. It's a Kanye song. It was off beat. Uh, it was a lot of things. It was very short, but that sounds like a Kanye hook to me and I enjoyed it. It's just the fact that it was recorded by uh, by the TMZ guy, the fact that it was at TMZ offices, uh, offices, I think, is is just really is Kanye is. There's a thin line between what Kanye is doing and what performance art is. You know, and I hate to look at Kanye always with the artist lens, but that's what Kanye's presented to me. You know, I don't know Kanye personally. Uh, I definitely don't know Kanye personally to the point where I'm going to say that you're brainwashed and you're because that's just way too intense. Like, who the fuck? Who the fuck would I be to say that anyone because they support somebody politically or for whatever reason? Because don't forget, just because you support somebody doesn't mean that you full heartedly uh, agree with all of that person's uh, the ideologies and all their political gaffes. You know, you could support um, you could support somebody just because of one particular policy that they support. Maybe you're. You know, maybe you're a pothead and uh, and you support somebody because they are pretty liberal when it comes to drugs or 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 you're very serious about guns and you don't agree with somebody, but you like their stance on guns. And and I think that a lot of these celebrities who say that they support Trump is that they like the fact that Trump says whatever he wants and they they're not romantic about the details of the damage that he does. I think that's the big thing with Kanye is that he's, you know, just like I told you in the video, um, you know, with Walt Disney, he's not concerned about, well, he was an animator. He did this. He did that. And also thoughts of Walt Disney being an anti-Semite and being very uh, accommodating when it comes to when it came to uh, Nazis or people who were family members of Nazis or, you know, something like that. I'm, I'm not very knowledgeable about the situation, but there's a reason why you see all those jokes on Family Guy about Walt Disney being an anti-Semite. But, um, um, you know, all the terrible things that you could say about somebody, Kanye's not attaching himself to that. He's attaching himself, I think, to just the fact that he says what he wants. He's opposed. So I'm opposed and I'm really getting opposition now. I'm getting opposition from my own people. So what am I? I'm, I'm, I'm like the, the greatest people in history. I'm like MLK. I, I, I was the, the most hated black man in America. And then when I died, I was revered as this great thinker. I'm just like them. I am a great. Pro it's all very misdirected. Everything is all misdirected. And it's it's pretty much I can I can relate it to. I can relate it to sports in the sense that everything that you hear now about sports, specifically, say, in basketball, for example, which I guess is good timing for this because we're going through the playoffs, which I haven't really paid too much attention to. I just know that we're building up past the first round and, you know, we're getting to the finals, uh, you know, every week. So everything 
over the last few years in sports has been about just winning championships. It does not matter how you get it. It doesn't matter how you get it. Everything that you hear about LeBron now is about LeBron jumping to what is the best situation for him. Everything is about that. Everything is about, well, you got to win championships because it doesn't matter how you get it. It's if you get it. It's if you get it. It's if you get it. It's like the same thing now with uh, with just garnering audiences. It's it's the same thing now with, with getting to a particular goal. It doesn't matter what you do on the way to it just as long as you do and you get congratulated for it. That's what Trump showed us. Trump showed us that you can be vile, you can be totally unqualified to do anything, but as long as you had your core, your constituency, you know, whether that be Russia, whether that just be a core of people that are stupid enough to believe in your message, then it does not matter and i think he's paying very very close attention to that he's figured out that wait a minute if i want to if i want to do um you know my production company which what was it called donda i think it was named after his mother if if i want to create these big empires these huge empires where i can do so many things as far as fashion as far as visual art as far as movies you 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 don't know what lies in the mind of kanye as far as what he would like to do as far as what he would like to do we limit him to just making music i've done it for years we all limit him so we've always opposed him in that way Maybe because we're afraid that he'll run out and leave and he won't make any more music. Because Kanye is one of the most influential artists of our time. You know, he's got to be up there top five. He is one of the most influential artists. You have to put him up there with Tupac. You have to put him up there with Jay. You have to put him up there with Rakim. You have to put him up there with the greats because he changed what the idea of being a rapper looked like, what it sounded like, who, uh, what it believed in. There's so much that he did and the ripple effects that we see that, that, that Kanye's done within the rap culture as far as who he's inspired and the people that he will inspire 10 to 20 years from now. He's already Walt Disney to us. He's already been that to us. And I feel like he knows that as well. He knows that we're his core. So he can maybe run out and do this weird, goofy performance art bullshit that he's doing now. And maybe he can get more of a fan base, whatever the reason. For whatever the reason, he believes that he has a core within us and we already believe in him to some extent. And uh, we, we're limited. We're limited in the ways that we look at him. And I guess he figures in 10 years, he'll be doing things that we never imagined him to do. You know, sh shall I remind you the classic Kanye West story that everybody always says? Well, they told him he couldn't be a rapper, so he said, "You know what? He's, he's, he, I'm gonna be a rapper." They they told him that he couldn't sell multi platinum records, and he sold multi platinum records. You know, it's always they told me I couldn't do this, and I did that. They said no, and I said yes. It's always it's opposition, 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 opposition. Several videos that I that I've made over the years, you know, uh, um, look them up. Uh, I, you know, I should lay it in the description below. Let me not be an asshole. Um, you know, Kanye needs an enemy. Um, the one that I did in 2016, where he first spoke to Trump. I mean, it was sort of a variation of what I said today because it's something that I do believe. It's something that I do believe. I still do believe it today, and I believe it to be true. I be I believe that this is just all about my my goals my power and what i want to do but in order to get to that i need opposition i need to be like the greats of all time who were opposed in some way shape or form does jay-z have a lot of opposition no he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of opposition why doesn't jay-z have opposition i think jay-z doesn't come to much in his from an overall standpoint, in, in, in his day-to-day, Jay-Z is a multi-millionaire who runs several companies. I'm sure that Jay-Z runs into challenges on a day-to-day -day basis with employees, with business ventures that he wants to get off the ground that just don't happen. But from an overall standpoint, does he have a lot of opposition? He doesn't. Jay-Z's very calculated. He's He knows 
He knows exactly what he wants to do, and he's going to do it with the, the minimum amount of sensationalism, and he's going to do everything his way, the right way, you know, the most quiet way, because I think he's a very private person. So he's not opposed often, and everything that we always hear about the greats, whether it comes to whatever field you're, you're, you're considering, whatever field you're considering, you're considered, uh, consider the arts, uh, consider activism, uh, consider sports, consider any practical industry that you work in, anyone who is considered to be a person that will be remembered, a person that puts in work that will stand the test of time. One of the main themes of their life is opposition. And I don't think he cares if the opposition is bought, is, is self-inflicted, but as long as it's there, it's sort of an indication that there's resistance in an area and I should go in that area. You understand what I'm saying? So if, if, if I'm going to get a lot of shit for supporting Trump, then that means I'm going in the right direction, you know? So I think it's a, it's a formula that's worked in the past, but now it seems to be a formula that could be quite, quite harmful to people because he stands for something to people. He represents something to people. He doesn't represent all that is holy to me. I'm too old for that shit. I mean, Kanye's, how old is Kanye? Hold on. Kanye, but four to five years older than me. Like, I mean, not that age is necessarily the marker for admiration, but I mean, you got to put it in perspective. Kanye age. Kanye's 40 years old. Okay. He'll be 41 years old. You know, Kanye is five years older than I am. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't look at Kanye to be all that is holy, but some people might. There's, you know, there, there may be some people that look at Kanye as a source of inspiration. And now that we live in the times that we live in, it's scary to think that although there are some sensitive people out there, there are very sensitive people who take politics way too seriously. And I'll always argue that they take politics seriously, but they don't really know politics because they only listen to specific sources that are confirming how they feel about things. And then they just go to bed at night and they, uh, and then they, they watch Stephen Colbert just make light of a situation that's a lot more severe, but he only makes light of it from his own perspective. And he's, in, he's not very funny. He just pays attention to, to whether he thinks he's right or not. And not just even Colbert, just, just all these uh, late night people, um, you know, who all basically have the same, the same narrative. You, you would never see uh, a late night person who was more uh, conservative, more to the right, that would never happen because uh, just uh, just just Hollywood in general just won't vibe with that. But uh, the, 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 these people are very sensitive, you know, and if you're looking at Kanye as a source of inspiration and he says that he supports Trump, then a lot of people can lose hope on what they feel that is holy. I mean, when Lupe made Hip Hop Save My Life, that's a song that will definitely stand the test of time because hip hop has saved lives. It saved lives. You know, people make rap songs to empower people. They make rap songs for all sorts of levels. They make it to empower people, you know, to get you moving, you know, to get you, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to give you a vibe, to, to, to get you to move about the world in a more positive way, whether that be something that's very, you know, that's a club knocker, you know, whether it be something that's quote unquote conscious or just a, a regular trap record, it doesn't matter. So they make records to inspire people and hip hop can save lives. And there are probably, you know, thousands upon thousands of people out there who have been saved by a Kanye West song. You know, many of you listening, you may consider that there are certain songs that you've listened to. And this is fucking this is extraordinary. This is great that there are songs that you've listened to in your life that have saved your life. Not to say that if these songs weren't created, you would have killed yourself. 
It's to say that these songs have given you a a jewel of wisdom. They've given you a jewel, whether that be one line in the song, whether it be the chorus, whether that be the entire song. There's been music that's been made that saved your life and helped you maneuver in the in the most virtuous way that you could. You know what I'm saying? And that's really up to you. You know, that's up to what you do with the music um, once you get a hold of it. But um, but there's people that will hold Kanye very they'll, they'll hold his feet to the fire because of that, because he means that much to them. And. You know, and to that, I'll say that just be very conscious of the world that we're living in right now. Be very conscious that we have a lot of information coming at ourselves and separating somebody from the music is something that you definitely have to do. I mean, anytime somebody asks, can you separate an artist from the music? Well, you have to. Okay, you have to. And if you don't then you will most likely send Kanye tweets like he's been in the sunken place. Kanye, you disappoint me and you want to throw away his records because you think he represents something else. You have to separate the person from the music because the area that we're moving into is very fast paced. It's been very fast paced for a while, but the velocity is just going to increase. We're at... A half an hour, and I like to keep these things uh, a half an hour because, you know, fucking talk for, for two hours. But you are listening to the DDOT Podcast. Your donations are always appreciated. DDOT Podcast at gmail.com. I'm out here. I'm creating content for you. I hope you guys can appreciate this because the podcast can sort of serve as just add on to the things that I discussed earlier in the week. I mean, that's basically what happened here. I discussed J. Cole, I discussed Kanye, and I made a video about J. Cole and Kanye just earlier in the week. So I'm paying attention to your comments. I always pay close attention to them, whether I like it or I observe it, or, you know, I only get about, you know, at max about 200 comments a video. So it's not like there's too many coming at me. No, I, I pay attention to everything. So please comment, please subscribe, Please like the podcast because that helps with the overall algorithms, both liking it and commenting. Um, Big shout out to Drew, by the way. Uh, You know who you are. Um, So it helps the algorithm. So thank you for listening. I'll see you guys next time.